Pratt. I'm a master sommelier and a partner here at Atrium Dumbo Restaurant in Dumbo, Brooklyn. Well, Atrium was a collaboration between the three partners. Uh, we, had, we had worked for some of the best chefs and restaurant tours uh, in the world. Um, you can drop names. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I had worked for Michael Mina, uh, Tom's Keller, the French Laundry, Danielle through all of his restaurants here on the East Coast and in Miami. Uh, I opened up a two-star Michelin at Terra. I worked at Le Bernardin, uh, uh, and then I was a head sommelier for Jean George. Uh, my partners have worked for Ellen Ducasse and many of his restaurants, Pierre Gagnier, uh, Danielle again, uh, as well as uh, uh, you know less notable chefs, but very very great restaurant tours around the world. So uh, we had all uh, met while working for Danielle, and we said, you know, hey. Um, we want to do something for ourselves and kind of push our vision uh, a little bit if we feel we're ready. Uh, and that's really how it all came together. You know, we were lucky. We didn't waste a lot of time uh, kind of figuring out what we wanted to do. Uh, you know, in the career search, we just kind of fell in love with hospitality. Uh, and that's really kind of where it all blossomed for us. It's the three of us. We're, we're in a very beautiful neighborhood, Dumbo, up and coming neighborhood. It's Cobblestone Street. It's right off the, uh, the park uh, here just across in Manhattan or the Brooklyn Bridge. Uh, some of the best views, a very classic historic area. Uh, and what we're doing is really trying to offer, um, you know, maybe a neighborhood place that's very comfortable with high quality ingredients. Something that, uh, you know, is non pretentious and, and definitely disarms as you walk in, but you can get, uh, you know, very, very high quality stuff. Uh, that, was, that was our major goal as we wanted to be kind of a, a convivial neighborhood place. Uh, coming from, you know, programs where I've had three or four million dollars to spend just in one for that year. You know, you could do cellaring. You also had space to put it. Uh, unfortunately, I don't. So the stuff that I buy, most of it needs to be ready to drink. Um, the other thing that I really look at, you know, is value, absolute value. Um, because what, what you are is you're you're kind of the you're the in between, you know, between the winemaker and the guest. And then there's a lot of steps in between the, the importer, the distributor, and a lot of people you have to pay that mark it up and things like that. But the idea is you want to get the guests the best wine possible for the least amount of money, you know, um, based on their experience. And, and I believe also in wines of place, wines that, wines that have that history, of wines that tell that story, when you taste them and you say, you know what, this wine comes from this place and I can taste it. I know it's made by this person. It couldn't be made anywhere else in any other year, any other fashion. I know. You know, those are the wines that I think present the most value and also intellectually, not only do they taste good, but then those are the ones you can go deeper and deeper and deeper into and you can get a lot of satisfaction out of. Also, a, a really, really big component, and this is how I judge any great wine program, I don't care how big it is or how many, you know, special vintages you have and all of these things, you know, that's, that's great. And, Reserved to a select few restaurants in the world, to be honest, that's a, that's a special program for a special place. Um, but I don't think just because you have, you know, two or three or four thousand selections on your list that it makes a great list. I think what's most important is what your guests are going to experience the most of. So it's either your by the glass program, or if you have a tasting menu, your tasting pairings. So these need to be of the highest quality and the highest integrity. Uh, because this is what your guests experience the most of. You know, wine's an inclusive process, not not a not an exclusive you know thing reserved for intellectuals and people with money. It shouldn't be. You know, and that's that's often we often get confused as somebody is saying, oh well, this person doesn't deserve to drink this bottle, or you know, and I hear this shit and it drives me nuts. It makes me really angry. Like, oh, well, you know, we're not gonna we're gonna tell him we're out of that because we don't want him to drink it because he doesn't know anything about wine. Drives me nuts. Now I get it. I get it. You want to try to find that wine a great place, a great home for someone that really appreciates it. But also think about all the great sommeliers in this world that ever started. You know, I guarantee you, when they tasted that sip of wine, that that changed their life and made them change paths like that or start a second career, it wasn't because they were, you know, worthy of this great wine that someone let them taste and experience. No, it's just because the wine spoke for itself and they tasted it. You know, so I'm a big believer that the buy the glass program or the tastings have to be of the very best value, the highest quality and, and integrity that you can because, again, you're, you're trying to change people's lives here. Yeah, this is, this is, a, this is a, a very good example of uh, what, what I was saying about value and quality and, and, and integrity. This is a wine that I pour by the glass. It's a simple Burgonde Blanc, which means it can be sourced anywhere in Burgundy. It just has to be, um, uh, you know, well, 
more times than not, it's Chardonnay. Um, but even though it's a simple Bourgogne Blanc, it comes from a singular place, uh, being the Commune of Merceau. It's not classified as village or premier cru or grand cru, but it's made by a family that's been making wine there for quite a while. Uh, and it has an incredible sense of place. There's this beautiful, uh, you know, minerality and texture. Uh, there's also the uh, kind of Meyer lemon meringue, orange zest, and, and, and like a hazelnut component from the oxidation that you get. So when you taste it, you put it in your mouth, and it could easily be Merceau, and, and better than, than most people's village level Merceau, and some people's premier group. I think it has more minerality, more texture, and this is just a simple wine by the glass that you could experience here. You know, it's an allocated producer with small production. Uh, so I'm very fortunate I started uh, supporting them maybe five, six years ago when they came into the U.S. 